In this final video, we're going to complete our web server. We're going to allow it to create records into our database, to also update records, and also to delete records. So to do this, we're going to update our REST controller to have all of these new endpoints, and then we're going to download and use the Postman API platform that will allow us to access these endpoints. So by the end of this video, we're going to have a complete web server that can perform all CRUD functionalities with our database, and we're going to be able to call these three endpoints that we create with our web server. So we've created some GET requests from our current server, and we've been able to access them through the browser. But in this video, because we're going to be creating some put, create, and also some delete requests, I'm going to be using the Postman API platform because it provides us with a slightly nicer UI for us to make these REST API calls. So if you head over to postman.com forward slash downloads, you'll be able to download the Postman desktop application. And this will make it a lot easier for us to make these REST API calls as we update our application to support the put, post, and also delete requests. So I've started the application once again, and we're on port 8080. We can see we have these two get mappings from before. So I'm just going to test these out in the Postman application. So if I select this plus star from the Postman platform, we can see that we have a get request, and I'm just going to type in localhost colon 8080, and then forward slash, and then with the get all addresses. And now if I hit send, we can see the same output down below as we otherwise would have received if we'd gone through the browser. So the first enhancement to our controller we're going to make is going to be the delete request. And ultimately the delete request will allow us to remove certain entries from our database by specifying a specific row from that database. So we can mark a delete request with the delete mapping annotation. And then within here, I'm going to pass in the endpoint of remove and we will need to specify an ID of the row that we want to remove. So just in a similar way that we have this get mapping above where we pass in the identity, I'm going to pass in an ID. This method is going to return a Boolean because I would like to know whether or not we've been successful at removing this entry from the database. And I'm just going to call this delete row. And then I'm going to define this integer as ID, and this is going to be extracted from the ID variable from our endpoint. What I would like to do first is to check if the database that we have contains this ID. So I'm just going to have an if statement. So I'm checking if the MySQL repository find by ID returns an optional of empty. And if it doesn't return an optional of empty, then we will know that the row within the database exists and that we can therefore delete it. So therefore I'm going to use the MySQL repository and I'm going to use the method delete by ID, passing in that same ID and that will remove it from our database. And then go to return true because we've been able to remove that row from our database. But if the ID we passed in doesn't exist, I will very simply return false. So if I start the application one more time, and I head into the MySQL workbench and run the select star, we can see we have the three entries as we expect. I'm just going to copy this endpoint just at the top. And then within the Postman API platform, I'm going to create a new request. So I'm going to hit the plus button. I'm going to change the request to delete and I'm going to go to localhost, then I will do forward slash remove and then forward slash the number one. So if I send this request, we can see that down below that it's printed true to us. So now if I head back into the MySQL workbench and I run the select star one more time, we can now see the ID of one has now been removed. And if I go back to the get request for all the addresses and I send it one more time, we can now see we don't have that ID of one anymore. Now, if I were to try and remove a value that doesn't exist, so if I were to try and remove number six and send that across, we can simply see that it's returned false back to us. So that's the delete request. Now we're going to look at how we can actually update a row within our database. So when we want to update a row within our database, we want to make a put request, and therefore we're going to need a put mapping annotation. The endpoint for this is going to be forward slash update, 
and one more time we're going to need to identify which row within the table that we're updating. What I would like to do is return the updated entry back to the user from this method. So I'm going to do public address and I'm going to call it update address. The first variable within this method is going to be the path variable that we accept so we know exactly what row we're updating. However, when we make a put request, we're going to need to specify exactly what data we're replacing it with. So when we send this put request from our server, we're going to have to attach a body to it. And within that body, we're going to contain the JSON data that we want to update our database with. So we're actually able to extract that data from the body by using request body. And when we have a JSON data, essentially it's a map of two different strings. So we have a string for the key and we have a string for the value. So I'm going to store our JSON data into a map of a string to a string. And I'm just going to call this body. So what we would like to do first is extract the address that currently exists within our database. So I'm going to use the find by ID method. And then to update this address, what I would like to do is use the JSON data from our body to then set the new parameters for this address. So I'm going to do current dot set street then I'm going to obtain the value for the key of street from our body so I'm going to do body dot get and then street I'm going to do the same for the number and also the postcode but I'm going to have to pass the int from the body for the number and now we have an updated version of our address and now what we will need to do is save that back into our database. So I'm going to be able to do this by using the save method from the MySQL repository. And this is just another further method that comes out of the box with the Spring Data JPA dependency. And then I'm just going to return the updated address. So now we're going to head back into the Postman API platform and we're going to see how we can make this put request to update one of the values. So we can see that for ID2, the number is currently 301. And let's say I just want to update this to the number of 501. So I'm going to hit that plus button and we're going to be making a put request. We're going to go to localhost 8080 and we're going to hit update and we're updating the ID of two. Now what's missing is the updated data that we would like to send for our request. And we're able to pass in that request body that we've specified by selecting body down below. You then want to hit raw and then change the type to JSON data. And then within this section down below, we're able to type out our JSON data that we would like to pass into our request. So if we head back into IntelliJ, we know that this map of string to string, which will be our request body, must contain a key of street, a key of number, and a key of postcode. And the values for each of these keys will be the corresponding values that we would like to update it with. So I'm going to create the JSON data by opening a curly brace. And then within speech, speech marks, we're going to have street, and I'm going to keep it as cobblestone way. And then go to have number, and we're going to update it to 501 and then we're going to have a postcode and that will remain as BD1. So now we can send this request and we can see the response has been the exact request that we've sent and now if I go back to the get mapping and I send it we can now see the number has been updated to 501 and if I move into the MySQL workbench we currently have the number of 301 but if I select star and run it one more time, it's been updated to 501. Now the final type of request we would like to make is a post request. And this is where we're going to be adding data into our database. So for this post request, we're going to need the annotation of post mapping. And the endpoint is going to be add. And I would like to return the address that we're adding back to the user after we make this request and I'm just going to call it create. Now, similar to the put mapping that we have above, we're going to need to pass in a request body, which will contain the street, the number, and also the postcode that we require for the new item within our database. I'm then going to extract the street, the number, and the postcode from our body into their own separate objects.
and then I'm going to create a new instance of the address and I'm going to save it into the MySQL repository just as we have done above. So if I restart the application and I head back into the Postman API platform, I'm just going to hit plus one more time and now we're going to be making a post request going to be making it to localhost 8080 add then once again within the body we have raw and then JSON and I have a street called the drive the number is 10 and the postcode is dr1 and now if I send this request the response to us is the address that we've added and we can actually see that the ID has been incremented to number four because the maximum ID we had within the database before was number three. We have the number 10, the street of the drive and postcode is DR1. If I head back into the MySQL workbench, we can now query our database to see if that new entry has been added. And if I hit select star one more time, we can now see that new entry has been added down below. If I were to send this request multiple times, we can see that the ID is constantly incrementing. And now if I select star one more time, we can see all of those new entries have been added. So that concludes this video on how we can upgrade our controller to make post, put and delete requests from our RESTful API service. We've been able to leverage the Postman API platform to easily send these RESTful API requests. And then we've been able to verify within the database that we're able to delete entries from our database, that we can update them, and that we can also add them to the table. So this completes our RESTful API service where we have full CRUD functionality. That means we're able to create, read, update, and also delete entries from our web server into the database. And in a future video, what we're going to begin looking at is how we can handle exceptions from our controller just to make it a little bit more user friendly.